We have the Glasgow conference Im imminent. We have Scott Morrison clearly wanting to take a net zero 2050 position. We have the Nationals in conniptions over that prospect. Joining me now is Darren Chester, a Nationals backbencher who went back to the party room meetings for this purpose. So you clearly feel strongly about it. Four hours the first time, an hour and a half today. Where's the party at on this? Yeah, good question, Tom. It's been a very um, positive, uh, constructive and very respectful uh, series of meetings we've had already. In fact, I'd say it's probably been the best um, meetings our room's had for quite some time. Uh, there's no personal agendas here. People are very much focused on the policy and it's been very constructive conversations about how we ensure that the interests of regional Australia are properly protected as part of any commitment to net zero. So I think it's uh, been a good process so far. It's got a little bit, bit of work to done still, but we're heading in the right direction, I think. So when you say the right direction, you think there'll be agreement overall within the nationals well, to I'm... commit to 2050? Yeah, well, zero? Talk, Tom, you know, my recent tipping skills on national party outcomes hasn't been that good, so I probably shouldn't make any forecasts of where the room, where the majority might fall. Uh, my personal view is we need a credible position on, on climate change, and I believe the net zero position is where the whole world is heading. Obviously, I mean, uh, industry's heading there. Uh, some of the key groups here in Australia, the NFF and others are heading there. Uh, other governments are as well. So I think that's the direction we need to be going. But mm. there are reservations and there are reservations which I think are well founded in our room, particularly around things like uh, energy security, job security, uh, some of the socio-economic factors in regional communities. So our job as regional MPs is to strongly represent the interests of regional people. And you won't find anyone uh, who won't agree with this point. There are jobs in regional communities that will be impacted in some way by any commitment. Well, some jobs will go. The, well, the, surely there'll be fewer coal jobs today than there will be in 2050, barring spectacular progress in CCS. And maybe that happens and you've got clean coal. And, and, that, and that's why, but Tom... It's and not likely. And, that, and that's why our government has been approaching this uh, emissions reduction through a technology approach, not a taxes approach. And I think that's a sensible way of doing it because you can make that transformation occur over a period of time in an orderly way. Now, no one's going to lose their jobs tomorrow under the, the net zero commitment. It's more of a, a longer term uh, trend. But, you know, transitions in the past in regional communities have often been transitions to unemployment. We've seen well, things like forestry and fishery well, transitions. Well, in your area, transition seems to be an ugly word. Well, it is. Uh, sudden closures, for example, of, of coal-fired power well, stations. Is that what has people... Well, you, yeah, exactly. The, the term transition in itself, for a lot of people in regional communities, has been uh, bureaucrats or politicians from Canberra or Melbourne making decisions about the future of their industry, making all sorts of promises, and then they find out they don't have a job and the job they'll promise doesn't eventuate either. So what we're looking for as a party room is to uh, make sure we can guarantee job security. Uh, energy guarantees are obviously critically important. Reliable, affordable energy is so critically important for, our, for our, our nation's future. And ensuring we're also part of the solution around practical environmental management. So, you know, in my region, and as I travel throughout regional Australia, there's a real focus on things like you know, fuel reduction burning, you know, using indigenous fire stick techniques to reduce the amount of hazards in the bush so we don't have those catastrophic uh, events we've experienced in most recent times and, and, and property loss and lives lost. So mm. people are passionate about the environment in regional communities. Don't think for a second they're not interested in these topics, but they're also very focused on these practical things like you know, pest animal control, pest weed control, river, river habitat restoration, a whole range of packages, not just about emissions reduction. The, you mentioned people being scared and transition and so on. I mean, is it any wonder when the last campaign there was apparently having an electric ute, was a war on the weekend, <laughs> it was a wrecking ball, <laughs> Labor's policy of 45% emissions reduction, now we probably we might get to 40 anyway with the current coalition policies. I mean, do you feel broadly, you the government, you the nationals, responsible for the scare campaigns being run? No, what I feel responsible for is standing up for regional jobs and protecting the interests of regional communities. These were scare the, campaigns, weren't they? No, Particularly no, on the we, electric vehicles. No, you, you that just seems absurd, that campaign now. Well, you look, we'll go to electric vehicles for an example. Right now, there isn't an electric vehicle that could tow the caravans that Australians want to tow around regional Australia. You tell me an electric vehicle you can hook up to a three-tonne caravan and go and explore regional well, Australia I, right I, now. I believe there are multiple ones. Well, well there's, there's, no, there's none in the market in the same price point that people want to go and enjoy right now mm. in terms of touring around regional Maybe Australia. Maybe because we don't have vehicle emissions standards, though, <laughs> so we're not driving those cars. I, I think, I think we're, policy I, it's on. It's fair, fair to point we're heading out a bush track here and going off, off the topic of where you, where you brought me in for in terms of the broader mm. uh, issue of uh, emissions uh, by 2050 and what the regions want to see. What I want to see, and it's not about sitting around... Uh, with a shopping list coming up with all the individual projects we want. I want to see us working to a, a structural approach to reforming 
how we how we deal with regional Australia's issues uh, as a government and as a nation. What, what does that mean? Is that is that talking about what I know Senator McKenzie was talking about? You know, a sort of review on where regional Australia is at in terms of net zero and yeah. making sure there's a a constant process of not just broadly regional, but individual regions, your electorate. Yeah, and, and yeah, exactly. Reg a lot of regions are very different to each other, obviously. Mm. Uh, it's been recommended in the past to have a regional Australia white paper. Now, I think a regional Australia 2050 white paper makes a lot of sense right now in terms of looking at those social, economic, environmental, structural things that we need to do to get to this net zero by 2050. So what, maybe also what, net zero at the heart of that white paper, essentially? Or well, it's, it's a, at the just heart, part of it. Well, when you think about it, Tom, when you think about... Uh, which regions are most exposed to climate extremes and, and natural disaster? They're regions. How much money are we spending on resilience compared to, you know, raising money after the bushfire goes through or wherever it might be? We need, to work, we need to work on that prevention approach. I think having that okay. structural approach is a way to do it. Let me ask you quickly. So we've had a couple of Liberals say the Nationals don't have a veto power per se on this. It would ultimately be up to the Prime Minister to have a temperature check or canvas opinions at a joint coalition party room and then take a position to Cabinet. Would you agree with that? Well, Tom, this is about respect. And what I said at the outset is very true. This was a very respectful, constructive, positive meeting that the National Party's had in the last couple of days. And I expect to see the same in the Coalition Room, that respect, there are different views on this issue. It's a tough issue. It's complex for us to get our heads around in terms of how you achieve the outcomes you're hoping to achieve. And right. there may get to a point where some people have to agree to disagree, but you can still have a respectful conversation. Okay. And our job as National Party members is to make damn sure regional Australia is not disadvantaged. Would it be within the Prime Minister's rights, though, if the Nationals Party is slightly against this in overall numbers, but the Coalition is for it, for him to take that Coalition view? Well, I think it's in our interest as a national party. I think it's in the Prime Minister's interest as the leader of the country. And I think it's in Australia's interest to make sure regional Australia is well looked after. I understand that. That can be a caveat so, to it. So is, well, this is, this does is the Prime Minister have that right in your view? Well, this is a caveat I'm putting on it. The Prime Minister obviously makes decisions in the national interest, mm. in Australia's national security, Australia's economic security, environmental security. And what we're putting forward in our conversations, as, as, as I've participated in over the last two days, are very constructive, practical ideas which are going to be good for regional Australia and when regional Australia does well, so does the rest of Australia. The last issue I, I think I remember perhaps with this much passion was same-sex marriage or marriage equality. That ended up being a joint coalition view. So would it be fair enough for this one to be as well? Well, you're exploring the minutiae of how the coalition party room works. But this is important because there's a lot of talk, well, if the Nationals don't agree, Scott Morrison couldn't possibly split the coalition in this way. I'm asking whether if there is a, a slight nay from the, from the Nationals but a, a yay from the, the coalition, including the Liberal Party, whether he'd be entitled to proceed and take well, that to I mean, it, it is largely hypothetical what you're putting to me. What, what's in the Prime Minister's interest, and not whether you to do his job, is that we can unite as much as we possibly can on tough issues. What we're putting forward in our discussion so far as a group, it's only been held within the room, uh, have been very practical, uh, structural ideas that can make sure that regions and the families who live there are well protected, not just now, but all the way up to 2050. That's what we want to achieve, and that's in Australia's interest. Darren Chester, appreciate your time today. Thank you. All the best.